going on there youtubers and fellow riders the kim is back at it again in the garage cooking up in the diy on the lithium iron or the shirai lithium iron uh, battery um, i'm recently experiencing an issue with my charging system for some reason or another i am not getting the 4.2 volts that uh, comes along when when, you, when your bike's on kicking at 4000 or 5000 rpms uh, for some reason or another uh, my battery seems to be draining. Uh, I just recently changed my regular rectifier. I got myself a new MOSFET um, FHO20 uh, AA uh, MOSFET regular rectifier, and uh, I thought that would, you know, cure my issue. Um, the the MOSFETs, of course, are the better brand or better model of the regular rectifiers, and of course they're not so cheap. But uh, you get a better quality part, and it and it's a lot more efficient than your standard regular rectifier. So. That didn't cure my issue of of the uh, battery not reaching full charge, so which kind of leads me to believe uh, to research two other aspects. One, if you didn't know that you know there are three aspects of your charging system: you got your stator, you got your regular rectifier, and you got your battery. Now, if something's not working, you want to make sure you check uh, those three three things. And uh, you know there are various tests, and I think I have a couple of videos as well as how to test those as well to make sure that they're they're working properly. But for any reason or another, um, I tested my regular or my my stator, and I am putting out the 65 um, volts uh, out of out of the stator. So um, that seems to be working. Now, not all tests are 100% positive that you know that is that the unit is working right or is not working right. So um, I went ahead and you know purchased myself the new regular rectifier which was a MOSFET uh, FHO20AA and that didn't cure uh, cure my issue with the charging system so I'm currently experiencing uh, issues with uh, my battery being uh, drained so at the end of my ride or in the end of two days my voltage on my battery is about 11.9 when it should be around 12.5 12.4 somewhere around there uh, in that range so every night I come home charge my battery up I reach, you know, 12.9 volts at the battery, and uh, it holds overnight. So, which is kind of odd. So, um, seeing that I have a brand new regular rectifier, and it is working. I can see the voltage working, or it charging up during my ride, but I don't reach the full 14.2 to 14.5 volts that I should be getting during my ride. So. Uh, it kind of leads me to believe uh, two other aspects might be wrong. Either my stator is not putting out the correct voltage, or something's wrong with it. You know, when it go, when it uh, heats peak at uh, 5,000 RPMs. Um, like I said, I tested it. I am getting the 65 volts at 5,000 RPMs as I should be. But again, like I said, tests aren't always proof positive that there's something something that is fully operational. There still could be something wrong. So my next aspect is to move, go ahead and move on to the battery and replace that and see if that's the issue. So I went ahead and purchased myself the Shirai battery on eBay. Got it for about 159 bucks. Okay, on Shirai's website they offer it for 199. This is the recommended um, the duration um, battery from Shirai. Now you, they have two uh, two versions of it. They have your standard and they have the duration version of it. And this. This is like, I guess we want to say the who's your daddy of batteries in the Shirai for our motorcycles. So I went ahead and purchased that. So I'm going to about to open this up, up and see what you and see what we get. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, sorry if it's a uh, camera view is bad. I'm working with one hand. So forgive me if something seems, if the video quality seems kind of shaky. So you go ahead and get your, you get a sticker. Not bad. Don't know where I'll be putting that. Definitely not on my motorcycle, but maybe on my microwave. So, go ahead. There's a little attention warning I'm telling you about uh, about using the incorrect battery for your your bike and how it voids your warranty. Inside here we got our our battery, our lithium iron battery, and uh, this thing is quite light. To tell you the truth, um, you know the whole box itself. When I was I was surprised when I got it, I said, like, "This is not a battery because normally the batteries are pretty heavy." Now I have. Um, a sealed battery and um, it's kind of just like this with no um, no vents to actually fill up the um, what's inside here I forget what it's called but uh, looking at this battery uh, here's the model for our bikes if you're interested in purchasing one yourself and this thing is hella light you know it's just way different than 
than our typical um, standard batteries that we purchase um, for the motorcycles from either the dealership or you know some other shop but uh, giving you a quick look at it all the way around all right so after reviewing the website and, and uh, watching a few tutorial or YouTube videos on this battery you know there's some pros and some cons um, you know I live here in California so we don't really have a uh, you know extreme cold weather uh, some people report that this battery uh, fails at, at anywhere between uh, what 40 to 50 below um, so and people are saying that they have issues with the bike starting um, you know these so what I hear is that you have to actually let the battery warm up if it fails to crack uh, to turn once you, you know you crank, crank the bike once let it sit for a few minutes and the battery does some type of self warming and then uh, you go ahead and crank it again after a minute or two of uh, that self warming period so there's a look at the battery and uh, to show you my battery that I do have in my motorcycle right now it's, it's a sealed battery that much resembles much like this one so I'm gonna go ahead and push pause and move over to the bike so you can see the current battery that I have and I'll also show you the voltage that I'm currently uh, that's currently going on right there so give me one second while I push pause All right, so back at the bike here, and this is my current battery. As I told you before, it's sealed and somewhat resembles the um, the Shirai battery. Um, the Shirai battery is actually a lot thinner, I would believe. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring that over here in a minute and show you the, the, the size comparison. Uh, but um, this is my current battery, and to show you what I am rolling at, I just really recently charged this battery, and it's sitting at 12.2, and it'll sit this way all night long including the daytime but when I go out for a ride of course the um, the voltage drops as soon as I turn on the motorcycle um, it, it'll drop down to about 12 point 12.2 uh, volts and it'll stay there for a good day or so a good day of riding you know maybe about 30 to 40 minute ride so uh, to work so I would say about within um, within an hour um, I'll be back at 11.9 volts which tells me that I have an issue with my with my charging system somehow or another so like I said I got a brand new regular rectifier which on mine sits down here and because uh, I, I relocated it but um, so we know that that's brand new and that's working um, only other option is you know actually uh, getting into the stator which I told you before I've already tested it and it's not and it's working perfectly fine you know it's putting out the proper AC voltage uh, of 65 volts when at uh, 5000 rpms so I'm going to go ahead and replace this and uh, I'm going to remove it from the bike real quick and move it back to the table so I can show you the physical size difference between the uh, Shirai battery and and the uh, standard. So give me a second while I push pause and get this motorcycle out of, or get this battery out of here. Okay, so I went ahead and got the battery out and as you can see there is a huge difference in the physical size of these two batteries. Shirai is of course a lot shorter in height than the standard battery as you can see. Now, uh, another huge aspect of this, and one positive, is it's also a whole lot lighter. I mean, there's no effort to pick up this battery whatsoever. But when you when you go and, and try and pick up this bad boy, this weighs in about a good 9, 10 pounds. And I'm struggling to pick this, this sucker up. And you can see right there, um, that is extremely heavy. The Shirai battery, it's just, you know, it's like it's like picking up a box. It's, it, it is so light. Um, Supposedly it does have a carbon fiber case, um, you know, to you know protect the innards, but um, whatever it is, it, it, this battery is extremely light. Now, uh, the reason why I chose the LFX 19A4 BS12 is because um, I run a lot of accessories, and this is what is recommended if you if you happen to uh, do run a lot of accessories over the over the, st the standard version of this battery. So. Um, if, for those of you who are running lights or extra fog lights, um, I got fog lights on my bike. I got uh, an HID kit. I got uh, and I got my standard city lights that you know my ground effects lights that light up the whole bike. So um, this is the recommended battery from Shirai if you're if you're running accessories, you know, like I am. So um, looking at the physical aspects, you know, all the terminals they seem pretty solid. Let me go ahead and take this off of here and. Uh, you know, the terminals are pretty solid. They don't feel chintzy at all. So, and um, I'm also running my um, regular rectifier directly to my battery. You know, I'm not using the, the standard uh, harness connector, which is located in the rear seat. 
um, to connect to my regular rectifier. So um, the FHA, um, the I forget who made who made that model. I'm not sure if I have their card up here. No, um, yeah, I do actually. The regular rectifier I, vir I purchased from uh, RoasterCycles.com. Um, it's a direct connect to your battery, so all the power is shooting directly through your uh, your to your battery and not through your wiring harness. So that's a positive. So these extra terminals are going to come in handy for me. Uh, that's uh, so I can connect the regular rectifier directly to the battery, so get a straight charge through the system. So um, another aspect of it, uh, this one, like I said, it, it is a sealed battery. There's no refilling it up or anything. So once this, uh, you know, once this goes bad, it goes bad. It's it's done. Um, same thing with this one. Um, charging is standard. They do offer um, a charging kit for this or a, a unit for this, so you can charge it manually. Um, that's another extra, I think, fifty bucks if you want to go ahead and purchase that. But you can per you can charge this with your regular um, charging system. Um, it's not recommended that you use the um, a trickle charge. Um, on these units so you know you just kind of want to stick to your standard um, your standard charger which I have over there because I was charging my battery earlier so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this bad boy in oh one thing I forgot to mention um, since there is a physical size aspect of it so let's go ahead and turn this down and you can see that uh, it's a little bit smaller and uh, in its aspect and its physical size and um, What's going to happen is, or what happens is, what's a really neat feature, I should say, is that the the inside packing with the battery that came with the battery is actually um, little foam cushions that actually attach to it, and I believe it has a sticky feature on here too. Yes, so you can peel back the stickiness on here and actually cut it out to the, sh the size you need if if the battery is too small and it doesn't fit in the tray. So these can be your your protectors. So that's a great feature that they added to it. You know, also protects the battery while during shipment. But um, so just to let you know, um, on that aspect, it also comes with your little package of bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and get this bad boy in and see what kind of voltage I get directly, you know, from the first install. So let me go ahead and push pause, get this battery in there, and then I will show you what type of voltage it it initially comes with uh, out of the box. Give me one second. Get right back to you. Okay, so I'm in here trying to install the battery, and I just want to make a quick note to you guys and let you know that um, during the installation, I saw a little minor issue, and that's the problem of these of the OEM um, wiring harness or the OEM uh, cable that it has these little butterfly tabs that that fit the standard battery. Okay, so it's not gonna tip. It's not gonna go be a smooth fit on there. What uh what happens is these it doesn't quite fit over these terminals. And so you're gonna have to take a pair of pliers and uh, kind of raise up on the ends, crimp the ends, pull them upwards, and flatten them out more. And uh, so I just want to let you know that uh, that was an issue right there. Same thing for the this stock one on on this side of here for the positive. So I kind of had to bend this tab upwards a little bit in order for it to fit smoothly on here, or else um, it's not a a straight fit. So um, just to let you know. Looking at the the way the battery sits in there, it sits a lot lower than the, the previous battery because uh, I don't know if you guys have the same issue as I do that when I try to get this cable in with a stock battery, you, you don't have this type of clearance. Being that this battery is a lot shorter, um, it actually lets me you know get the cable in here a whole lot easier than the uh, standard battery. So just want to kind of point that out to you before I actually fully imp implement this battery in here. So I'm gonna push pause real quick, tighten everything down, and then give you a voltage reading uh, from from the box. Now Sharai says that this battery is good to go. Uh, you know, on first installation, no need to charge it. It already comes pre-charged, and uh, so we're gonna find find out if that's true or not in a second. So give me a second while I push pause. All right, guys. So I went ahead and got the battery in, and let me tell you, um, the double post. Oh, they come in handy, so handy, especially for me. Like I said, I'm running a whole bunch of accessories and whatnot, and um, you know, I have my um, 30 amp fuse right here that goes to my uh, uh, to my regular rectifier. Um, so this came with my kit, and so I mean this is a great feature. You know, it, it's a self-resetting 30 amp uh, fuse. So, but the extra terminals or extra terminal connector came in handy because I can connect all my accessories up to here and just keep my main uh, main free of anything else. Same goes for the, your your negative. So I went ahead and and got that in there. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, 
what I'm currently getting as far as voltage right out of the box. And let's go ahead and turn on 13.5. Now you remember my other battery that I, you know, my previous battery, I was at 12.9 and that was with a full charge. I had it on my on my charging system uh, or my charger for about a good two, three hours and you know, it clicked on, let me know that it was at full charge. So my previous battery um, out, the bo uh, out the bat after a full charge, 12.9 volts. Now look at with the Shirai, out of the box, 13.4 volts is what I'm getting here, 13.5. So pretty good. It's it is what the um, manufacturer stated, and so that's that's true to life uh, information right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this back in here, and let's see how easy it is to get back in here with all my little modifications that I've done here with the extra wires. So yeah, not so easy when everything's connected. All right, let's get that in there, make some room. Let's see how far this bad boy sits in there. So that's great. If we're looking at it sideways, we can see my other battery was about up to here, and it actually, um, I actually had trouble with, you know, putting the seat back on with all the other uh, wires that I have connected here for my accessories. So as you can see, I have plenty of clearance, um, no more tight fitment with the battery uh, being in the way as far as getting these wires in here, underneath that, underneath the frame right here. And that was my common issue that I had every time I pull out the battery or, or do something with the battery. So um, I have a couple extra wires on this side. Um, one cable right here actually goes to my external charging post because you know I had I was having so many issues with the battery that uh, if I got caught anywhere else uh, out you know outside you know riding around that I couldn't get to the battery without a tool and out removing the seat. So I went ahead and hooked up this so that I could charge the battery if I needed a quick jump. Uh, from somebody riding by or you know passing car so this battery actually fits pretty nice uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go for a test ride see if this was my issue and um, with the uh, battery not uh, not reaching full charge or uh, during the during the ride so uh, what I'm looking for now is to see if my battery stays uh, actually or if my regular rectifier voltage reaches 14.2 volts, 14.3 uh, volts, somewhere around there, and stays consistent and stays charged, my battery stays charged through the whole ride home or to work and back home. So at any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hope it helped out. Any questions, go ahead and uh, put them down, down below in the comments. And as always, like, subscribe, and uh, you know, check out my other videos. So once again, this is The Chemist, and I will see you next problem.